In this video, we will look closer at the two main types of institutional units, which are legal or social entities and households. Let's start by describing legal or social entities. Legal or social entities are those that are recognized by law or society independently of the persons or entities that may own or control them. These units are responsible and accountable for their economic decisions. However, in many cases, other institutional units may constrain their autonomy. For example, in the case of corporations, which are controlled by their shareholders. Legal or social entities can be further subdivided into three groups of institutional units, corporations, government, and nonprofit institutions. For macroeconomic statistics, corporations include all entities that are capable of generating a profit or other financial gain for their owners. They are set up for the main purpose of engaging in market production and, importantly, they are recognized in law as separate legal entities from their owners. Governments are unique kinds of legal entities. Naturally, government units are established by political processes that have executive authority over other institutional units within a given area. As an institutional unit, the principal function of a government is to assume responsibility for the provision of goods and services to their constituents, which is financed by taxation or other income. Other functions include engaging in non-market production and redistributing income and wealth by means of transfers. Nonprofit institutions are created to produce goods and services. However, unlike corporations, these units are not allowed to be a source of income, profit, or other financial gain for the institutional units that manage or control them. In practice, activities of nonprofit institutions are bound to generate either surpluses or deficits, but the surplus cannot be distributed to other institutional units. Examples of nonprofit institutions include charities and relief agencies. We should note that the status of an institutional unit cannot be inferred from its name. Some nonprofit institutions are described as corporations. Similarly, some corporations may be described by other names, such as incorporated enterprises, limited liability companies, joint stock companies, among others. So, in order to properly identify an institutional unit, it is necessary to examine its objectives and functions. Now, let's move to the second type of institutional unit, households. Households are important institutional units of an economy. A household is any group of persons who share a living accommodation. They may pool some or all of their income and consume certain types of goods and services such as housing and food collectively. There are two forms of households. Individual households, with which everyone is familiar. These units, usually but not always, consist of family members or relatives. And institutional households. Institutional households refer to a group of persons staying in institutions for a long period of time. These include persons in retirement homes, prisons, or religious orders. An important note about households is that there are no size restrictions. A household can be formed by a single member or a number of persons. If the household consists of several members, each member is not treated as a separate institutional unit. Many financial transactions are undertaken collectively on behalf of all members of the household. Some or all of the income received by individual members of the same household may be pooled for the benefit of all members. For this reason, it is the unit and not the individual members that is treated as the household. Thank you.